Hey everyone, and welcome to a special episode of the Horseshoe Huddle presented by Fan Nation on SI.com. You know me as Andrew Moore, you know the guy in the upper right hand corner as Drake Wally, both of us writers here at Sports Illustrated. And we're here with one of the newest members of the Indianapolis Colts, an electric player who spent the last few seasons with the Buffalo Bills and is now going to make an impact in Indy. Isaiah McKenzie, how's it going, man? Great to have you in Indianapolis. Uh, going pretty well. Like I said, it's sunny, sunny South Florida. Not in Indy yet, but I should be in Indy probably April 8th, April 9th. April 9th is my birthday, so I want to probably celebrate April 8th and then leave April 9th, <laughs> get down the court first day and get ready. Awesome. Awesome. Well, happy early birthday coming right up around the corner. And uh, I know a lot of Colts fans are, are very excited to have someone, someone like you with your explosiveness come to Indy. So, so let's, let's just kick it right off and, and ask what really, uh, what really decide uh, made you decide to come to Indianapolis? What were some of those deciding factors? Oh, uh, I guess you could get money aside. Money. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so, you know, I, I didn't know much to be honest. I didn't know much about Indy. And um, I knew they had a good running back. I knew they had two good receivers that we watched after that I've watched uh, last year in Pittman a couple couple years. But Pierce was a pretty good receiver. Um, and you know we played them a couple times in Buffalo. You know when I was in Buffalo, we uh, played them a couple times, and they weren't a bad team. They had a good defense. Um, offense was solid. Had a good run game or whatnot. And for the most part, um, for me, coming in as a new head coach, Coach Steichen, um, and just kind of. Talking to him a little bit and trying to and just picking his brain and getting the feel of how he wants the, the team to flow and how he wants things to be in the locker room on the field and things like that. Kind of, you know, I wouldn't say let me there because I already signed at that point, but just talking to him made me just made me think about, hey, like this this might be the right decision, you know, after all. And you know, I had other options, like seven or eight options, but I'm like, okay, well, the coach is a great opportunity for me to go out there and, you know, be that wide receiver three behind Pierce and Pittman and, you know, just compete. You know, not saying it's given to me, but I'm going to go out there and compete, and, I, and I'm a competitor, and that's what I want to do. But I feel like, you know, with the right pieces around you, you you know, you can you can make some some plays in the NFL as a team. And I feel like, you know, with a solid offense they already had with solid with Jonathan Taylor, Pittman, and Pierce, I just come along, you know, do my job, get open, catch the football, and the solid defense they have, you know, can maintain and and on special teams as well, you know, if I'm the returner. I'm going to go out there and make the best plays I can, you know, to help the team win. So I feel like, you know, we can make some explosive plays, win some games that people think we won't win, and go out there and surprise a lot of people. You know, that uh, awesome answer because that, like, let leads um, into the question I was going to ask you, and that's – so, like, it sounds like Shane Steichen kind of had some influence on, you know, you looking like saying, hey, this is a big opportunity for me with a – forward-thinking play caller which you saw a lot of that obviously in buffalo yes um but what, what's your what's your favorite like what what are some of your favorite things about you know what shane steichen's wanting to do because he even said he wants to make the offense more explosive and more vertical and it sounds like you're pretty excited about that yeah um for him you know it's just like the, the eagles offense they were pretty explosive you know they, they ran they ran a lot of things it made a lot of explosive plays all those explosive plays took them to the super bowl you know they came up short but they had a hell of a super bowl run and, and and even in that game they they made some great great plays so i feel like his offense is in a way i wouldn't say similar to you know buffalo's offense but it's headed in the right in the right direction you know what i'm saying we can run the football uh play action we can throw it deep get off some option routes in there and just mix it up you know and let it let other teams you know try to prepare for it the best way they can and we just come out there and switch it up on them and I feel like he has that in his, you know, play calling ability and his in his game, you know, just like we all got it in our game. You know, we just want to switch things up when the time comes, and I feel like he can do that. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen, but I feel like it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, and I think that's something that that what we've seen recently is the Colts want a dynamic offense. That's part of the reason why Shane Steichen was brought in here, why the, the Colts have gone out and gotten playmakers like Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, yourself, kind of all, all, all excel in different areas, but, but combined together could, could really be something special. And and you kind of talked about it, about being possibly the number, number three wide receiver. I know you spent a lot of your career playing, playing in the slot. Uh, I, I was going to ask kind of what, what are the intricacies about playing in the slot? 
slot role that are that are different than than maybe say playing as a Z or an X wide receiver on the outside? Uh, how do you how do you kind of change things up, or, and and then what makes you so successful at doing that? Um, I was behind a great slot receiver and Cole Beasley, so he taught mm-hmm. me a lot. But um, for me, you know, coming out as be, you know this last year being a starter in the slot, um, I feel like. You know, the slot position is a little more, more detailed. You got to be a little bit more detailed because you're inside with linebackers and inside that box and you got to get open in small spaces. And for a slot receiver, I feel like for, for me, it's more of like, hey, you got to play with a little bit of savviness, you know? You know, you got to you know, learn how to break down zone coverages. Man to man, okay, it's a given. You know, it's man to man, man in your face, you beat your man, that's it. But once it started getting into the zone coverages, people start disguising things and you can't – and you got to read it on the fly. That's the hard part. And I feel like I've learned that in being in Buffalo and just being a part of that offense because we ran a lot of option rounds and things like that. So I feel like my mind now, I, I read defenses clearer, faster when, I, when I'm when i out there and just playing with a little bit a little bit of tempo so I know where to be at the right time and in the right spot. Because, like I said, it can get a little tricky at times. You know what I'm saying? It can look like. Uh, zero blitz and then they, they drop out into coverage and you're like oh snap I ran this route but now this dude is coming where my route is and he's dropping into his spot so you just got to play with a little savviness you know it's more mental in the slot than it is physical like okay two shell maybe cover two could be cover four depending on where the safeties are and whatnot um the nickel will probably will tell you a little something and then you just got to read certain players or you just hey you just got to read the shell you know the shell just tell it all and for me I've, I've learned a lot in that in, in this position and like i said you play with a little tempo play with play with your mind and not and and, and not your feet and then let's i'm sorry play with your fine and play with your mind and let your feet carry you you'll be just fine and i feel like that's what i have now just you know coming up behind cole beasley and being in that buffalo offense and running a lot of option routes you know i can you know i can do a lot of things in there yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure it also kind of has an impact where you go out there and you don't want to be thinking too much as well, kind of slowing you down. So exactly. that that's that way you can play free with your feet, like you said, and really kind of just let your mind guide your feet of where to go, not really trying to process things too much, making it more natural. Yes, yes. You know, uh, you were talking about Cole Beasley, and I know that you started your career in Denver. Yeah. So you did have a change of scenery going from the Mile High City all the way to Buffalo. Now, yeah. you're going from a, an incredibly competitive uh, division with, you know, a, a, like one of the one of the best coaches ever in Belichick, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL in Allen, and then a couple other teams like the Dolphins and Jets that are up and coming. Is it? Have you taken a moment to see who you're going to be facing in the AFC South? It's a little bit different i think that the teams are kind of switching and there's different like eras coming into the respective franchises but have you had a moment to like see who you're going to be uh you know put up against in in the division and if so is there anybody that sticks out that you're looking forward to having a matchup against um i I know you play houston we play houston we play the titans and we play uh jacks Right, to you see them two mm-hmm. times a year, and I haven't really looked at the full schedule, uh, you know. But I've, I know that those are, those are the guys in the division, we got to win that, you know, win that first. But, um, you know, like you said, coming from a competitive AFC East, you know, what I'm saying, they, and the thing is, the AFC East has grown these past few years, like you know, like you were saying, like you know, Tyree Hill goes to the Dolphins, they already got Jalen Waddle, Tua coming along, Josh Allen. And, and with Diggs and Gabe and uh, Bees and all all the guys, all the guys we were there at one point. Um, and then, you know, Patriots, they still solid, always with a solid defense, solid, solid special team offense, you know. They still trying to build in that area, but it's not like it's gonna, not going to improve. It's going to improve with Bill Belichick being there, you know. And then the Jets last year came along with the good defense, and then they put us together a solid offense, and they, they made a run. So I feel like, you know, at any given time, any division can just hey, we we're the next up division. Hey, we're we're in a, and you know who knows if you know for for this division, you know who knows at what point is that going to happen. But you know, I'm just you know ready and prepared to play anybody at this point. You know, I feel like I've been into some I've been in some tight games. I've been in some games where I've, I've lost. 13 seconds. I've been in some games where we lost, you know, on a quarterback sneak. I've been in some tight games. I've been in some competitive games. I've been in some games we needed to win. And I feel like that that gives me an edge, 
you know, being in that, like I said, being in that division, like you said, and it's just like, it gives me a little edge, you know, like I know what it takes to go out there and lose 13 seconds and, and, and lose in a shootout where it's 35, 35 and, and we're playing a hell of a game. So just coming and bringing that to this team and building this team up the best way I can, even though it's not my team, but I, I that's how I think of it. You know, I think mm-hmm. of it, hey, I can, I can do something in the locker room and on the field to help this team be all the other teams in our division and, you know, possibly make a run. So I, like I said, I, I know it's the Jags, Houston, sorry, the Jags, Houston and the Titans. And that's all I know for right now until I look at the whole schedule. But I feel like we can, it's, we can have a shot if we have the right mindset. Yeah. And you taught, you, you just said how you, you might try to make an impact wherever and, and something that you've done throughout your career is, is on special teams, uh, whether yeah. it's being a punt returner, kick returner. Um, and, the Colts have valued special teams very highly, especially yeah. since Bubba Ventrone came here now with, with coach Brian Mason. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you see uh, is, is punt returner, kick returner on the table for you next year with this Colts team? And, and do you think that that's something where you can excel at again here in Indy? Of course, it's something I can excel at. And it's something I enjoy doing. You know what I'm saying? I, I haven't had the best of moments sometimes, but who has, you know, who has had their, you know, every, everybody has their fair share of muffs or whatnot. And right. all that. It comes with the game. Right, it comes with the game, and but I feel like I'm a, I'm a, I'm electric. I can do a lot of things back there on the punt return side and the kick return side, and it, it's shown. You know, what I'm saying I've done a few, I've done things back there, and had some great moments. So for me, it's it's on the table. I want to I want to do it, and I'm going to compete for it. I know I'm not just going to it's a just your job. No, I'm going to compete for you know that Robert Smith three spot, that that punt return kick return spot. And I don't mind doing that. I've been competing my whole career, so I don't mind doing that at all. And I feel like that's what, you know, that's what I bring to this team, a, a sense of competitiveness like like no other. You know what I'm saying? And Buffalo is the same way. You know, I have a guy like Stefan Diggs, and he's very competitive, very, <laughs> very competitive. Mm-hmm. And um, and Gabe Davis came along, he was competitive. Cole Beasley was a competitor. Like, he was like – like, and I had guys around me that, that was just like me. And, you know, I feel like – I can bring that to the locker room and let's see what happens with it. You know, you know, that was actually, uh, I really like that you said that because you have literally done everything that a receiver can do at this point. I mean, you've ran the ball, you've scored rushing touchdowns, you've caught passes, you've scored, you know, special teams, touchdowns, everything. With that being said, Isaiah, what is your best quality as a playmaker? <laughs> That's a tough question, Drake. <laughs> uh, for me, I think I think for me, what makes me, you know, a playmaker myself and make me so electric. I, I say my speed. You know what I'm saying? Getting open and just knowledge of the game now. Just the mental aspect of the game as I've grown mentally. Because physically, I already had I had the speed. You know what I'm saying? I had the get open ability. And and some of those things, I, it took time. It took time. You know, and I feel like now I'm, I'm just going on year seven. Mentally, I've grown, you know, physically, no, I ain't getting no taller or whatever, right? But I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm fast. I'm, I'm fast, with faster than anybody that stands in front of me. You know what I'm saying? One of the fastest in the league, I feel like. I can get open just like the best in the league. You know what I'm saying? It just, you know, it, it takes time for people to notice you. You know, and I, feel, I came off my best season last year as a starter or whatnot, I did what I could with that. And I feel like now I want to take another step. I want to, I want to, I want to have that 800 to thousand yard season. I want to have that 60 to 80 catches. I want to have uh, four part returns on the season. I want to be all pro. I want to go, I want to be a pro bowler. And I feel like I have the ability to do that now. And coming to Indy, it may start there, you know, who knows? And, and, and why not? Why can't it start there? You know what I'm saying? I'm seven years in now and I feel like I have those abilities. And I have these, I've grown mentally and I've put added things to my game that I'm really, I'm ready to show, ready to show off. And I could just see that competitive fire in you. And, and I think that's going to fit perfectly within this Colts locker room, a, a group that really likes to work hard, that didn't have the best 2022. And I, I know I know that that hurts and that that really created a fire within a lot of those guys in the locker room to go out there and and prove the world wrong, that, that this 
team isn't a bad team. They've got good, high quality players in this locker room. And then kind of speaking to that, uh, I know, I know your nickname coming from Buffalo was the face of the franchise, uh, which kind of made me smile. How, how did that come about, man? How, uh, where did that nickname come from? And, and is that, uh, what kind of, also what kind of presence are you bringing to this Indianapolis locker room? Um, I was going to practice one day and I was, they had the camera out and I just mm-hmm. like, I said like face of the organization, something just, something normal, you know, and I just walked away. Nothing crazy. I was just like mm-hmm. a side thing. And then I just walked away. And then, uh, it, for some reason, like it was, it, it, it grown, it had grown, you know, like people was like, oh, like, oh, it started being like a, uh, like a thing, like a quote unquote mm-hmm. the franchise, even though it's Josh, but it's just like, oh, quote unquote. And then it, it got to a point where like people was like, no, the face of the franchise, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it, and it kind of, it kind of stuck, you know, because mm-hmm. like I was everywhere. You know what I'm saying I was up and coming with the, with my role. I was making plays on the field. I was a glue guy in the locker room. I was good in the community. I was good with the organ. I was good in the organization. Like I wasn't doing anything wrong. It was just like I was just doing the right thing, and a lot of people, you know, stuck with it. Oh, face of the franchise, right? and then they said, "Oh, your smile makes you the face of the franchise," and all that stuff. Because and, and all that. So for me, what I bring to Indy off just off of pure me is a good guy. You know, I just had my, to argue with my girlfriend the other day. I'm a good guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 We've all been there. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, and I just, for me, right, I just, I go day to day. I go, like, I'm on time. I show up in practice. I give you tremendous amount of effort, competitiveness. We going we gonna to bicker or whatever, no, but nothing, nothing too crazy where it's bad blood between the two. It's just competitive, you know, juices flowing. Um, also, you know, that's on the field. And then in the locker room and in, in, in the meeting room, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm holding people accountable, um, talking a little smack here and there, just to see where people's heads are. I'm a morning guy. I wake up in the morning and um, I'm ready to go, you know? Um, I'm good with the people around me from janitors to – to everybody, I, I, I'm I'm nice to everybody. I feel like that's that's just just me. You know, I've never been me. You know, and um, I feel like that's what made me a glue. I know I'm talking about Buffalo a lot because that's the only way I've been. But that's what made me a glue guy in Buffalo. It was like, hey man, this good. He's good in the organization. He doesn't get in trouble off the field. You know, he's he's on time. He's taking care of himself. He's always available. He's making plays. You know, how can you count that guy out? You know, and hey it sounds like to me face of the franchise you're doing everything right right Mm -hmm. (laughs) but no like that's what i you know you know bring to you know indy and i feel like i can bring a little bit more you know whatever i gotta bring i don't mind bringing you know i'm saying if i'm a if i'm a captain this year hey i'm a captain i've never been a captain but it 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 felt like i was a captain in buffalo so if i if i got to get that c on my chest and say hey hey i'm ready for it and I'm prepared because I've at this, like I said, I've grown mentally and and I've grown with this game and I understand what needs to be done, you know, in the locker room and on the field. Yeah, you know, I, I, that's that's kind of segueing into like a question that I was thinking of is that when you like coming into Indianapolis, it's a team that's kind of doing things new and it's a it's a moment where it's it's shifting things for the first time in a couple decades, really. Um, there's a chance they're going to have a rookie quarterback. There's a chance mm-hmm. they're going to have maybe a, you know, a rookie receiver in the room. I, you know, what piece of like, is there advice that you get, like that you would give to those guys or like kind of a mentorship role to, to play because you're going into the locker room, heck of a locker room guy, heck of a leader. Like what have you thought about maybe what that might look like being around a couple of rookies and how your role or how your, I guess, day to day might be different than with a veteran. Um, I guess to, to, for starters, I feel like I, I, I can lead by example. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like, if I show up on time, this rookie better be here. You know, if I'm, if, you know, if, if I'm in this meeting and paying attention and you sleeping, then that's the wrong thing to be doing, especially as a rookie. You know what I'm saying? You, mm-hmm. you worked your whole life to be in this position. You might as well take full advantage of it until you can't no more. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I feel like I, I've done and I feel like, 
you know, a lot of young guys can do the same thing. And I wasn't the first round. I was a fifth round pick. I also got cut. I also was a backup for a while. I also had to fight for my position every year. And it's like, I've, I, I've been through those things. So I'm not telling you something I haven't been through, you know, yeah, may, you may be a first, the guy that comes in, maybe a first round pick, second, third round pick, whatever. And it's a little leniency when those first three rounds, you know, like, you know, guy, a potential guy, they, they see him as potential eventually, you know, but I see as a guy, hey, you can help us right now and you can reach that potential right now if you just do what you got to do right now and don't say, hey, I got next year, I'm going to grind next year. No, you can grind right now and help this team out, you know, because it looks good on the coaches. It looks good on the organization. Organization, hey, we drafted this guy, great guy. He's learning from the veterans. He's, he's willing to learn. And and for me, I got to lead by example. You know, being seven years in, okay, he's a rookie. I'm going to teach him everything I know. I'm going to teach him everything I've been through. Maybe he knows something I don't know or whatnot about the game that he that makes him, you know, excel at what he does. And I'm not going to take that away from him. I want, I want all the people around me to excel. I want them to do great. You know what I'm saying I'm gonna I'm do my part. I'm gonna do my part the best way I can. You gonna do your part the best way you can. You know what I'm saying we're gonna help each other and celebrate each other's success. And it, from a rookie quarterback to a rookie receiver, you know, and it's a little different from rookie quarterback to receiver. So receiver, I can help him the best way I can. Right? He's in my room. I can I can hold him accountable. I can do every quarterback is a little bit. You know, coaches handle the quarterback. You know, situation. I I can tell from a quarterback standpoint. To me, it's like, hey, look. You know, I'm a run at the catch guy. All you gotta do is dump it off, I'll run. You know what I'm saying? You don't gotta fire a hundred miles an hour ball, right? You know, things like that. Just give them like certain certain things to think about. Hey, okay, well, hey, I can throw a jump ball to Pittman. I can throw a jump ball to Pierce. I see I can just dump it off. He's gonna run with it. And and, and that's to help his game as well, you know, because you know, a lot of guys come in and think they gotta throw the hardest, throw the farthest, or whatever. Hey, just do your job. You know, just do your part to help the other guys succeed. And it makes you look well, look, makes you look good. I think that's really key because I mean, you, you got a 21, 22 year old kid coming in playing quarterback and it, it can be really overwhelming at times. Yeah. And, yeah. and to have some veterans like, like yourself, uh, like, like, like Quentin Nelson, Michael Pittman in there, in that, uh, in that offense they're kind of like hey just take slow down take things one at a time you don't have to be superman on every play no. you can rely on us to go out there and, and make plays yeah. um so i think that's going to be key for for the colts this year and then i know you had spoken with a couple guys that that you had known on the team uh like kenny moore uh zach moss uh, i'm sure you probably talked to to former colt naheem hines who you were teammates with yeah. last year uh when you were kind of making this decision, what did they, what, what things did they say about the Colts organization that, that, that really perked up your ears or, or kind of got you really interested in thinking, man, I could really make a huge impact on this, on this team. And this is where I need to be. Uh, well, I talked to Zach Moss and he's talking about Zach Moss was like, Hey man, it's, it's cool here. You know what I'm saying? It's something like Buffalo, a little bit different, but it's something like Buffalo. You got coaches are cool. Players are cool. But you, and it's like all love and, in Indy, and um, it's like a like, you know trying to trying to build a family somehow, mm-hmm. some way, somehow, right? And then Kenny Moore, he was there for years, and he I would uh, I was I, I would I trained with him in twenty twenty one. He would come out and we would train together, and we would just talk, you know. And he had a lot of good things to say about Indy or whatnot. And um, uh, I spoke to him, and he was like, "Hey, come on over." He, he DM me on Instagram, "Hey, come, you know, come whatever." We talked about it. Um, no, I, I didn't talk to Naeem Mines. You know, I didn't ask him much about it. Um, who, else, who else? Oh, Tony Brown. Tony mm-hmm. Brown is another guy. I, I actually just got a phone with him a couple hours ago. We was talking. And um, he likes being there. You know, and, and from what I heard from the coaches, just talking special teams coaches and things like that, they love Tony. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They love him. He's competitive. You know, he's going he's, he's to give you great effort. He's going to give you great energy. And they love him there. And I, I feel like if they love him, they love me because I feel like we just we're kind of the same people. We talk a lot of smack, you know. And we're probably a little different. I don't know. I you know I haven't been around him enough to know him fully, but he has a competitive edge. He wants to win, and you know we probably gonna bump a few bump heads a few times, but it is what it is. I like that. Um, but yeah, it seems like everybody gets along with everybody. It's a family. Everybody's in tune with everybody, and everybody holds each other accountable. It's just. You know, we just got to tie some things up. You know, we got a little few injuries and, you know, a few things here and there. But 
it'll, it'll be better. Tony's a good dude. He's uh he's very energetic in the yeah. locker room. Uh he 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 loves to loves to joke around, but hey, once he gets on the field, he's a dog. He's he's, he's very good. serious, very competitive. So uh I th- from what I've heard and 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 talked to Tony, I mean that fits him perfectly. Yes, yes. You know, the, the, there was one more thing I was gonna k- kind of ask you here is that it might be kind of a general question, but you came from an organization that took they kind of like you turned you know they had a long time where it was just a massive struggle to get to the playoffs and now they're perennial playoff contenders and so uh, this is a team that's kind of you know resetting things as well coming from an organization like you did there in buffalo what what do you think you know picking your brain here what do you think it takes to to become uh you know to turn things around like you were a part of and, and make the playoffs for a team like the Colts that you're on now uh that's a great question. Being there, right? I, I I say this, being there, being in Buffalo, like that was really every year was like we were like a family. Like we knew the guys, everybody from practice squad to to the highest paid dude on the roster, everybody got along so well. Right? Everybody got it was never any since I've been there, there was never any animosity in the locker room, no fights, no nothing. And it starts there, right? You build your family in the locker room, right? And then when you get out on the field and you get in the weight room, you start seeing the guys, like, okay, he has an edge. He has an edge. He has. You start seeing those guys like, okay, I can work with him because he has that, like, fire. It, it was something Brandon Bean said to me. He always says it. He was like, I'd rather, have to pull, I'd rather pull a guy off than tell a guy to go, like, go harder, right? And I feel like for – I don't know if for many coaches or for GMs or whatnot, like that's a that's a real thing. That's a real thing. I really like because I because that's what we had on our team, like a guy like Stefan Diggs, right? It was like when he got between the lines, it's go time. And you and he either he's cussing you out. He said, hey, I want the ball, I'm open, da da da. And it's like, okay, okay, he's saying it and he's actually doing it. Right, so you can put up with that. It's the difference between a guy just saying something and not actually doing it. But I feel like every guy in that locker room, Buffalo locker room, they say it and they're actually doing it. You know, and, and you start to figure that out on the field, and then like on the field when those pads are on, you start to say, okay, this guy's actually saying he's actually doing it. So you can't really say much to him. Let him do it and let him do. Let him be him. And that's what it was for me. I, I would say this. When I got there in 2018, I'll never forget, right? <laughs> Deion Dawkins, the left tackle, right, mm-hmm. on our on, on the Buffalo team, the left tackle, he used to hate me. He used to hate me. Like, this guy's always talking shit. This guy's always doing this. But he would be like, bro, after, after a few years, he's like, yo, I used to, me and you, like, me and him used to bump hands about, about to get in a fight on the field. He was like, he was like, he was like, but you work, you're making plays. So I couldn't say nothing. I was like, but that's what I do. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk enough smack. I'm gonna talk a lot of smack. My grandma told me the same thing. I'm gonna talk, she's like, you talk so much shit. And I'm like, I talk a lot of shit, but grandma, you can't stop me. When I'm, when I'm, when I'm on this field, you can't stop me, right? You can't stop me in this weight room. You can't stop me on this track I'm running. You can't stop me from doing these 110s. I'm gonna show you that this is the reason why I talk shit. And I'm five seven. I'm going to show you why um, I talk a lot of shit. I'm going to show you. You're going to be like, damn, he talking a lot of shit, but he works. And I feel like in Buffalo, that was the same thing. It was a lot of people talking a lot of shit, but they worked. And there was nonstop competitiveness every single day. Like everybody had, had an edge. Everybody was like, hey, I'm, finna, I'm, I'm going out here and I'm balling out for y'all. Like, and it, and it worked. It worked. It just, I like, I don't know how to even put it in words, right? Like, I put on Twitter, I was like, I gotta write a story about it. I can't even put it in words <laughs> how that team, like this, that, that Buffalo, Buffalo team for years, like from 2018 till, till now, like, made tremendous jumps, j- tremendous jumps every year. Every year. So, 2019, Cole Beasley, John Brown game, John Brown came. We go to the playoffs, first round playoffs, right? And, we and it was nothing but five, seven, five, eight guys that go to the playoffs. Me, John Brown, and um, Cole Beasley. We go to the playoffs that year. Right, we lose to Houston. 
right? That next year, 2020 comes, Stefan Diggs comes, right? He brings something to the locker room. He brings something to the to the meeting room. Now we get an even more competitive. Gabe Davis comes in as a rookie. He's balling out because he wants to meet. We have a there's a standard now. Stefan Diggs comes, you know, making plays. Cole Beasley making plays. Josh Allen is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. John Brown's here. I'm here. We all making plays. You gotta be on, you gotta be on point to make these plays because we need these plays to be made. Because the defense making eight plays. Offense got to make their plays, and special teams got to make their plays. And it all – we was just playing complimentary football through the whole the whole 2020 season. And we had no fans. And it was, like, an amazing time. And that's why I feel like a lot of teams got closer. And you would think a lot of teams would separate because now they're not hanging around the guys. We got closer in 2020. And then 2021 came, right? Gabe got a year under his belt. Stephon Diggs got a year under his belt with, with Josh. And Cole Beats, oh man, it's it's about to be a, a firework show because we know back the next year we come back, hey, we can do it. We we lost this, we beat the Chiefs, we beat the Chiefs before. Let's do it in the playoffs, right? We 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 the best in the East right now. Let's go, let's 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 show it. And that's what we did. I feel like every year it was like nobody's stopping us. We got we got everything. We got a great defense. We got top ten, top five defense. We got top five offense. Special teams are doing their job. We 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 know what we are. We we got this, and that's how and that's how and and on TV that's what it that's what it looked like. Buffalo looks like a great team because everybody on that team like knew what knew what needs to be done. But also, Coach McDermott grew as a coach as well. He like in the beginning, you know, it was like he was trying to was like, hey, like let's do it this way. Let's stay let's stay the course, stay the course, da 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 da. But then after a while, he started, like, letting the players control the team. Hey, look, this is your team. What do you feel like we should do here? I'm going I'm to I'm have some concerns here and there. I'm going to say something, but I'm going to let y'all I'm gonna let y'all work it. I'm going to let y'all – hey, y'all got suggestions? Come to me. And we go to him, and he – okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Understandable. Can we, can we do this first and then do that? Like, he was letting us be us and letting us control the team. Now, if he had to tighten up on something as a head coach, he would. But, like, for the most part, it was a player's team. And we took that player's team, and we didn't go south with it. We went north. Like, hey, we're going to get better. We're going to get better. We're going to hold each other accountable. We're going to be on time. We're going we gonna to work hard. We're going to be competitive in practice. But when the game came, when the game came, it was like everybody was on one, one accord. We know what needs to be done, you know. And, I, and, and that's, that gives you – Along with your competitive edge and knowing what needs to be done as a team, is unstoppable. Man, right. that just got I think, me excited. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I think that just that just kind of shows right there that the locker room matters in the NFL. You have to have guys that that not only want to play for one another, that are a bunch of good dudes, but you guys you need guys out there that are competitive, that that are putting their all into reaching that 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 plateau, reaching and the top of the mountain. And I would say this, there was, I would tell you this, there were some guys that came in the locker room that probably didn't fit the mold of the locker room. And it had been, but I, but either those guys got with the program or they were gone. Mm -hmm. And I, but the guys that, but that's, that, like you said, the locker room is important because there's guys that don't fit. You know, there's some, they're going to be, it's, it's 53 guys in the roster. You know what I'm saying? Like not every guy is going to fit. You know, but most of the guys in Buffalo fit. But those some little sprinkles that didn't fit, and they fit in. They 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 find their niche. Like okay, I don't have to be this tough guy. I don't. I'm not a guy that's. You don't have to be a guy that's worried about money. You're not. You got. You don't have to be a guy that has to be a tough guy in the locker room. Nobody. Like you don't have to have that in a locker room like that in Buffalo, because they, nobody's nobody cares about the money. Nobody cares about you know. Uh, being a tough guy, but no, nobody cares about that. The only thing we care about in this locker room is being competitive in practice and winning football games because we have a good team. And the window is just this small. So we don't got time for tough guys and people worried about money. Right? And that's how it was at Buffalo. We, we don't got time for tough guys. Listen, when we get on this field, you can be as tough as you want. We get in this locker room, hey, we brothers, we family, there's no fighting. There's no animosity. I mean, you only have arguing here and there, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, there's like, yo, we don't, we, 
tough guys, you, like, what, what are you doing? You getting in trouble off the field. You know what I'm saying? You, like, you, you, you causing problems in the locker room. You late to meetings. You're cursing our coaches. No, no. What you, what you doing that for? What you doing that for? We trying to win. We trying to go win the Super Bowl. The only way we are gonna do that is if you go to practice. You, you beat the meetings on time. You, you do what the coach asks you to do. Obviously, yeah. It's gonna be sometimes it's gonna be like, damn. I, okay, whatever. Do it. It's fine. It's cool. Do it. You gonna go out here and compete in practice, and then we are gonna go in this game and we are gonna work together. We are gonna get this job done. So we can get a win under our belt and then go to practice and do the same thing again. And then, hey, when we when that's when we win the division, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go win the playoff game. Hey, we're gonna win the next playoff game. Let's go win the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? You gotta take it, but it's a step at a time. And a lot of people don't, and I a lot of people hate that. Trust the process, but <laughs> it's real. Mm-hmm. It's real because I've I've been a part of the process and look what it look what it's got in Buffalo, you know. No, they don't have a Super Bowl, but damn, they have a hell of a team. You know, it's like that process thing really works, but everybody got to be a part of the process. It can't just be uh, 46 and then the rest are like, oh, I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Because the practice squad guys matter too. And we ain't nobody looked down upon them. They came out there, they gave their best efforts every, mm-hmm. every day. Every day. And I, everybody got to be on one accord. We can't have a practice squad, practice squad guy saying, oh, I'm better than him. I should be playing. No. No, do your job. Mm-hmm. Do your job. Do your part. Your part is to go to practice and give a look. Give a look. I was that guy. I gave a look. And I ain't say I was better than such and such. I just let it play out. You know? Let the hard work speak for itself. And, and eventually, once once everybody is on that same page and, and all going towards that goal, it, you're right. It does take care of itself. We've and, seen and it. it and a lot of people don't see that because it's like, it's so like, it's like so far away. Like, okay, mm-hmm. like trusting this process. Like what, like I'm not being me. No, it's not that you're not being you. You just doing what you're doing. You're doing, you're doing what you're supposed to do for the team at this moment. Like leave all the baby mama drama, the girlfriend drama, the uh, whatever, whatever is in your ear manager agent whatever child support out the door when you step in this locker room you better listen you better give me a hundred percent you better do your job like you get paid to do and you better not complain you're gonna go in this meeting room gonna watch this film and you're gonna sit up you're gonna look at this screen just like i'm looking at this screen you're gonna listen yeah we're gonna have a little moment where we can key key but hey let's if we're not winning we can't do that Let's mm-hmm. let's go win first. Man, I would not be surprised if you got a C on your chest uh, yeah. come this fall. Uh, yeah. I I think Colts. I, I mean, Colts fans listening to this, they're they're just going to fall in love with Isaiah McKenzie, not only the player but the person. One last thing before we get you out of here. Uh, do you have any personal goals for this season uh, with, with this Colts team? Uh, I know you see the potential in this team and, and where it can go. I know there's a lot of guys in that locker room that spoke that, that feel exactly the way you do as far as coming together, doing their job, and really putting all their focus into becoming a successful winning team. Uh, but but what, what are your personal goals for, for 2023, and uh, what do you where do you see this Colts team going? Oh, my personal goals. That's personal goals, right? Well, I know I'm gonna have to compete for that wide receiver three spot. Mm-hmm. I don't mind competing. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a competitor, right? I want that spot, right? I also want to be the returner. You know what I'm saying I want to, I want to be in every part of the game. If I could be a nickel, I would try, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I want to be in that wide receiver, wide receiver three spot. I want to make a big splash in that slot position. You know, not just on the team, but in the league. You know, what I'm saying get open, catching the football. And if I'm making plays, that means the team is making plays as well, and we're winning football games, right? And from a special team standpoint, I want to be an all-pro returner. I've seen I've seen a couple of returners the past few years that, I, that I've watched, you know, come in the league with me or, you know, had a, a year ahead of me or whatnot, and they became all pros and pro bowlers, and I want to do the same thing. And I feel like I got ability to do that, you know, and I'm not saying I'm better than them, but I, I, I'm fast. I can catch the football. I can get open as a receiver, but as a returner, I can make people miss. I'm fast enough to get away from anyone. So why? So why not? Right. So for me, 
you know, those two things are my personal goals, just, you know, to help the team win. I want to be that wide receiver three. I want to make a big splash. I want to, like I said, I want to go for that 800, 900 yard season in the slot. I want to catch the 80 balls in the slot. I want to be all, I want to have two, three touchdowns under my belt at the end of the season, right? And be all pro returner, you know, be a, you know, just, and I feel like when I'm doing that, I'm, I'm doing, I'm helping in some way, somehow, helping this team win. And if I'm doing that, that means, I got to get everybody else on board. Pittman, Pierce, Doolin, you know, all those guys. Well, whoever's in that in that room with me are gonna gonna want the same thing for themselves. But that's for me. Those are my post, my, my personal goals. Awesome, awesome, man. I, I I can't tell you how much Colts Nation is gonna appreciate this. So uh, we appreciate you coming on, everyone. This is Isaiah McKenzie, the newest wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, and Colts fans, he's going to be a good one for this team, not only on the field, but in that locker room as well. So uh, Isaiah, where can people follow you on social media? If you want to shout out, if you ever have a foundation or anything going on, uh, go ahead and, and shout it out to Colts Nation, see what we can do for you. Um, uh, well, my Instagram is Zaytoni, Z, sorry, my dog, Bob, stop. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> uh, my Instagram, Zaytoni, Z-E-E underscore T-H-O-V-E-N. I also have a restaurant in Miami. Uh, it's called La Traila. It's L-A-T-R-A-I-L-A, La Traila, um, down in Miami. Um, other than that, that's about it, you know? Oh, oh. investing in this new thing called Laundry Hero take over in the northeast if you guys ever heard of it have you ever heard of a, a sub share hamper yeah, yeah yeah so laundry heroes like that you know the, the uber lift servers of laundry basically oh okay yeah, cool yeah so i'm investing in that but um that's a good deal but other than that no i'm just i'm ready to play football that's all i've been thinking about this off season you know and i think it's time you know april 10th is right around the corner i'm training and yeah not really. I'm not really a guy that asks for much or need much. You know, I just need a football in the field and let's get to work. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, we really appreciate you coming on here, uh, Isaiah. Uh, yeah. You've been an absolute blast. I know the Colts are going to love you. I know Colts fans are going to love you. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule, training for this upcoming year, uh, to have a conversation with us, man. That was awesome. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate y'all for having me. Awesome. Everyone, go follow Drake at DWalster Drake. You can follow me at Andrew Moore NFL. And we will be back on Thursday night to talk some more Colts football with y'all. Have a good one. See you, Isaiah.